Hello everyone, my name's Aidan and I'm a member of the St John's Church family and it's my great privilege to welcome you to what I think might be our 15th online gathering. Well it may be the 15th but it's my first time doing this online so you'll have to excuse the lack of polish but anyway I'm imagining all of you smiling faces as if I was standing or indeed sitting right in front of you. I'd like to make a special um, welcome to anyone joining us for the first time. Thank you very much and please do tune in again next week. Today is a little bit different because it's an all age meeting. Our younger members are gonna lead us in prayer and praise and worship. And Jono is going to begin a series in Luke preaching from the start of chapter seven when we're going to learn more about Jesus. And as Christians, we know the great good news that if we trust in Jesus and him alone, we can be friends with God. But we also know that we continually fall short and try to put ourselves in charge. So let's now acknowledge this and say together the words of confession that are going to appear on the screen in just a moment. Dear Heavenly Father, we are sorry for the wrong things we have done, the wrong things we have said, and the wrong in our hearts. We have not loved you the way we should, and we have not loved other people the way we love ourselves. Have mercy on us, cleanse us from our sin, and make us strong in your service. For Jesus' sake, Amen. In John's first letter, he writes that if we confess our sins, our God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for the gift of your son, our Lord Jesus, who freed us from all our sins by his death on the cross. Amen. We're now going to sing of the glory and power of this same Lord Jesus, the living one, the almighty Lord who was and is to come. <laughs>
Isn't that a glorious song? I love singing it and I can't really sing. But doesn't it make you think about Jesus's return and that image of coming on clouds of heaven so that all will behold him now? Aiden. Well, we're going to learn more Aiden. about exactly who this Aiden. Jesus is. Aiden. In the Bible passage, the rock. Aiden. Mr. Lissa. Thanks for getting us up to this point. But from here on, the youth group Rock Solid will be taking over your service. And to get us through our next part of the service, let us hand over to Rock Solid leader, Charlotte Smith. Wait, what? No, it's not me. I thought it was you, Andrew. No, not me either. It's Stephanie Marina. Sorry, it cannot be me. Um, we are an hour ahead in Milan, so the service has already finished. It was Josh leading. Guys! Hi! Welcome to Rock Solid Takeover! From now on, the Rock Solid leaders and the youth are going to take over this service and nail it. Alright? Um, when we first did our Rock Solid videos, the weirdest thing I thought, and I never thought this would happen, I never thought I'd have all of Rock Solid in my bedroom. <laughs> but... Even weirder, I've got the whole church now in my bedroom, basically. Weird. But, this is what we're going to do. Throughout the next couple of weeks, uh, we're going to be looking and answering the question, is Jesus the answer? And to start us off, we're going to play a little game. Yes! I love games. <laughs> Cheers, Dave. Thanks, mate. Um... Okay, so our game is a rock solid classic. It's gone through the years and it is one of Caitlin Tate's favourite games ever. And it's called, in fact, it doesn't even have a name. It does have a name, but we kind of just know it as a song. So the song, the song is, and you can join in because I know most of you, hopefully most of you, will know the song. Um, so join in, it goes, I like to prove it, prove it. I like to prove it, prove it. I like to prove it, prove it. I like to prove, prove it. it. Okay, basically the game is um, somebody will make a big claim about something they can do and they've got to prove it. <laughs> so let's get started. Contestant number one, what's your name? Where do you come from? And how do you like your eggs? My name is David Watson. I come from Royal Tunbridge Wells. I like my eggs chocolatey and from Cadbury's. Legend. Okay, great. Thanks, Dave. Um, and what is it that you uh, are going to prove? What are you going to prove that you can do? I'm going to prove that I can dunk it like Michael Jordan. <laughs> big claim. That's a big one. Only one thing to do. At home, take your guesses. Is Dave going to be able to prove that he can slam dunk a basketball? Take your guess. And let's find out. Can he? Can he prove it? Prove it. Can he prove it? Prove it. Can he prove it? Prove it. Can he? Prove, prove it! it. Predictable. The basket's like five times as tall as you, Dave. <laughs> um, right, you're, you're done. You can't, uh, you can't do it. You didn't prove it. But we're going to move on to contestant number two. So, contestant number two. What's your name? Where'd you come from? And how do you like your eggs in the morning? Oh, I've added the morning to that question. <laughs> um, also, just filming. Pop down on my screen. Jono, you'll be so pleased to see Everton are taking the lead. It's 1-0 Everton against Norwich. <laughs> uh, but yeah, contestant number two, what's your name? Where do you come from? How do you like your eggs in the morning? Ciao, I'm Marina. I'm from Milan, Italy, and I really like to eat scrambled eggs with bacon for breakfast. Okay, great. Hi, Marina, contestant number two. Um, can you tell us what you are going to try and prove. Prove it, prove it, prove it, prove it. 
my challenge will be a sushi challenge so i will move food from one plate to another just using chopsticks in 15 seconds okay so marina is trying to move sushi from one plate to the other can she do it what do we think at home can marina prove it prove it can she prove it prove it can she prove it, prove it? Can she prove, prove it. it? Can she do it? Let's find out, Marina. Take it away. Okay, so I'm ready for my sushi challenge. So let's go. Yeah, I'm done. And I prove it. Smashed it, nailed it. Well done, class, legend. Um, did you get it right at home? Did you think they could prove it? Or did you not get the points and didn't think they could prove it when they proved it? Because um, we want points, we want to win. We all know it's all about the winning and not the taking part. If anybody tells you it's about the taking part, that's false, it's all about the winning. <laughs> I'm so glad that you all know the game now. You all know the game, can you prove it, prove it. And one day, the dream at Rock Solid is um, to get, can you prove it, prove it at the front of church? Can we play it at the front of church with Tom Nash maybe taking part? A new vicar, that'll be epic. That'll be class. Um, can you remember also when I said um, at the start, I said we're going to be looking over the next few weeks uh, at the question, is Jesus the answer? And um, to find the answer... We're going to look in the Bible um, and we're going to see if there's evidence uh, that Jesus can prove it, prove it. There's your link. At Rock Solid, we love a link. Um, can Jesus prove it, prove it that he is the answer? And the Bible will tell us that. Uh, but before we do that, we've got a song. It's a banger, Rooney. It's class. I say class so much. Do the action, sing along, and have a great time listening to it. It's a good one. Uh, okay, these are the actions. Here they are. They go. Generations rise, generations fall, but his word is living and his word is sure evermore, evermore.
taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 1 to 17. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion's servant, whom his master valued highly, was ill and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves to have you do this, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word and my servant will be healed, for I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, turning to the crowd following him. He said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who have been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the bier they were carrying him on, and the bearer stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Imagine you're watching BBC Breakfast with Dan and Louise. You're watching in your kitchen and as you're watching, you realise that there hasn't been any mention of death. There hasn't been any talk of unemployment or recession, no talk of evil, hatred, injustice, no mention of death. Doesn't that just sound too good to be true? Maybe you're someone here this morning who thinks that about Jesus, that it all just sounds a bit like a fairy tale. It's something for the kids to enjoy, but as an adult, you couldn't possibly be confident and be certain about Jesus. But the Bible says otherwise. It says that we can be confident. Luke this morning shows us that Jesus is the one. He's the answer to the question being asked. Take a look down at chapter 7, verse 20. Now, we'll have a look at this passage more in depth next week. But here's the question for our series in four in Luke. Are you the one? Are you the one? Can we be 100% sure that Jesus is the answer, that he's the one that we need? And as we'll have, see this morning in Luke chapter 7, starting at verse 1, we see that Jesus is the one, the one who came to rescue us from death. So let's take a look at the evidence together. So here's our big idea. Jesus is the one who came to rescue us from death. And as we'll see, he can prove it. Follow along with verses two to three with me. There was a centurion servant whom his master valued highly, who was ill and was about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders to ask him, asking him to come and heal his servant. So as Jesus heads into town, there's this centurion who sends for Jesus. This is a man whose servant, verse 2, who he values very highly, he loves, well, he's about to die. And this centurion has heard about Jesus, the miracle worker. Now that isn't really a surprise. In chapter 6, we see that Jesus' popularity is, is really high as Jews from near and far come to him as he heals the sick, the blind, the lame, the deaf, 
and as he taught like no one else. Well, now it's the turn of the centurion to come to Jesus. And he's not a Jew. He's probably not a Roman either. He's a Gentile, a non-Jewish person, someone who's outside of the Jewish nation and he's working for Rome. But we find out that he's got a great respect for the Jews. And showing respect, he sends the Jewish elders to Jesus. And they say, verse 4, when they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves you have had to have you do this because he loves our nation and he's built our synagogue. The centurion had great respect for the Jews and the respect was mutual. Even though he's not one of them, even though he's working for the enemy. And so Jesus goes with them. But the centurion sends word, the servant has died. It's game over. Well, not quite. Look at what the centurion says in verse 6. Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he was amazed. The centurion is a man with authority. He told his men to go, and they would go. He told his men to do, and they would do. The centurion knows authority because he has some. But more than that, the centurion understood that Jesus is the one with absolute authority. Did you notice verse 6, how he calls Jesus Lord? Not just Lord of the manor, but the Lord of life and death. The Lord God, who has come to rescue and save people from death. And that reminds me of another army man. Will you join me in the nearby village, the church building of my old church family, France Church. And we're here because the centurion reminded me of an old friend. Next to me is the plaque for Colonel John By. He had lived in the village and he's buried in the village. Like our centurion, Colonel By was an army man, a man of great authority, a man with many great achievements in his life. He'd been sent out by the king to go build the city of Ottawa. Part of that city is named after him, He's got a school named after him and he was loved by his family. This plaque and the tomb outside is still visited by Canadians today. This man is a man who had everything in life. But listen to what is written on his sign. Colonel John By, he resigned his soul to his maker in the full reliance on the merits of his blessed Redeemer. John By was a great man, deserving of great respect for all that he had done. But ultimately, these two army men had found that the answer, the greatest achievement in life, well, that is to know Jesus. That is why the centurion in our passage said, I do not deserve. He knew that he didn't deserve to have the Lord Jesus come to his house. But he also knew that the Lord Jesus didn't need to come to his house. Verse 7, Jesus, say the word and my servant will be healed. Lord Jesus, use your authority That is faith. 
that rescues from death. A faith that should make us think and contemplate about our own faith in Jesus. Amazed, verse 9, Jesus said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. It is the one from outside of Israel who is the one that really gets it. Lord Jesus, I do not deserve. Say the word. And with no medicine, just a word from a distance, without even seeing the servant. Verse 10, the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Jesus proved it, proved it. Historical eyewitness evidence that shows us and proves to us that Jesus is the one. He is the answer who came to rescue from death. God's amazing king and his kingdom is one that will go to the ends of the earth. Jesus' kingdom wasn't just for the Jews. God's rescue plan is for all nations. That's shown by the fact that the centurion wasn't a Jew. All peoples. Faith has no gender or racial gap. Jesus is the answer for all people. The one who comes to rescue from death. We simply have to respond to the evidence in faith. So Jesus is the one who came to rescue us from death. But can he prove it more? Well, verse 11 to 17 says, yes. Soon afterwards, Jesus heads to another town and he's followed by his friends, the disciples and a great crowd. And as they come into town, they see a funeral, verse 12. On seeing this sad event, well, what does the hero do? Verse 13 when the, Lord saw his, when the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her and he said, don't cry. Jesus saw the funeral and the mourning mother and his heart goes out to her. He has compassion on her grief. Maybe you feel like that sometimes when you see a hearse driving along St John's Road. Your heart and your prayers go out to the family in the car behind as they go to the funeral. But we're powerless to help the grief. But not Jesus. He has the authority and the power. He says, don't cry. Verse 14. Jesus went up and he touched the bier they were carrying him on. And the bearer stood still. He said, young man. I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk and Jesus gave him back to his mother. We have a great faith in modern medicine and in the NHS. From my five-year-old son to my 69-something-year-old father, they all require medicine. See, we put our trust in doctors and in medication. We see that the evidence that asthma inhalers and painkillers that they work and we trust it, we take it. And how much we're hoping for medicine to come through for us now. But actually medicine is not the answer. It's really very simple. We do not have the power to save ourselves from death. But Jesus, he has proven that he is the answer. The Bible tells us that he's the one that we need. The Bible promised that the answer to death and sickness and this broken world was coming. Luke and the Gospels announced that he has come and he has proved it. A Christian does not have blind faith. We can have a confident, certain faith 
because of the historical evidence written down for us. Young man, I say to you, get up. And the dead man got up and started to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. That is utterly amazing. As Jesus lovingly passed the son back to his crying mother. He must be God if he can make the dead rise. And that's what we've been thinking about all morning. Jesus is the one who came to rescue us from death. He has proved it. And we can believe it. Jesus shows us what he came to rescue us from. All that is wrong and broken within this world. Death defeated by Jesus. And he proves that for himself, most obviously at the end of Luke's eyewitness account. Maybe you'd like to go away from this gathering and read Luke chapters 23 and 24 for yourself. Ultimately, in our passage this morning, it is the centurion who shows us the right response to Jesus. He confidently knew that Jesus was the one. But he also knew that he didn't deserve Jesus. Jesus is the Lord God. Who deserves God? But confident that Jesus is good. Just say the word. The only way that we can be made right with God is to call out to Jesus, confident that he is the answer, the one who has authority over life and death. One out of one faces death and Jesus is the answer. He is the one who came to rescue us from death. He has authority over it. He has compassion to give you life. What an amazing saviour. What an amazing rescue. Let's pray together. Awesome Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to rescue us. We thank you that he has power, authority and compassion. We ask that you give us confidence and faith in who Jesus is. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Great. So we've just heard God's word. Um, and now we're going to test you. We're going to quiz you on what you've learned. And this quiz, uh, I've got my official quiz paper here. This quiz is called the five second quiz. So, there's going to have, there's going to have, there's going to be five questions and you've got five seconds to think of the answer. Once you've thought the answer, shout it out, I'll be able to hear it um, and see if you got it right. So, five seconds once I've asked a question to answer and we'll see how you got on. See if you were listening. Or, as we learned in my home group, whether you might be a dippy duck and just had your head down and not listen. Don't be a dippy duck. <laughs> so, question one was, is, who had a sick servant? And the answer, it was the centurion. Question two, how did Jesus respond to the centurion's faith? He was amazed. That's the answer. He was amazed. Jesus was amazed. So question three. How are you getting on? How are you doing well? Question three. What did Jesus say to the crying widow? He said, don't cry. That's the answer. Don't cry. Question number four. Who brought the servant and son back to life?
And the answer, of course, is Jesus. Jesus brought them back to life. And the final question, don't need this anymore. Final question is, is Jesus the answer to our biggest problem? And simply, the answer is yes. Jesus is the answer to our biggest problem. Amazing, how did you get on? Um, cool quiz, hopefully you learned something um, today or you've been reminded that Jesus is fantastic, he's awesome and he is worth following. Um, and we can say with great confidence that uh, we know who Jesus is because of the Bible. And answering the question, is Jesus the answer? Yes, he is. Uh, we're gonna carry on looking at that in the next couple of weeks, like I've said. Um, Spoiler alert, Jesus is the answer. It carries on that way throughout the whole Bible. Jesus is the answer. Um, but yeah, we need to put our trust in him. We need to have faith that Jesus is the answer and that uh, he, he died for us. Jesus died for us. Um, and as we, as we bring our time together to a close uh, and this rock solid takeover um, finishes, we hope you've had the most amazing time and um, let's respond together and sing um, Jesus, uh, that Jesus is the hope of the nations. <laughs> So we're going to spend some time in prayer in a moment and thank you to the Rock Solid members who have put these prayers together for us. Um, but before we do, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone that sent in things uh, for this and a huge thank you to those that every week have been working really hard getting songs and uploading things, filming. So just a massive thank you to everyone that's been involved with that. Over to you guys. 
Dear Lord, thank you for the Bible and thank you that we may be able to read it whenever we want and not be constricted to certain times. Thank you that we will be learning about Luke's gospel over the next couple of weeks and help us learn more about you through Luke's gospel. Please may help us know and love you uh, by learning about um, Luke (laughs) and please may you help us stay connected and still learn about you through videos as we may not be together. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for young people who have been unable to return to school or to see friends over the last few months. We thank you for the technology that we have access to in this country, which has enabled us to keep in touch. But we know that this cannot replace face-to-face contact. Please help us not to be frustrated or upset as we approach the summer break. We thank you for the changes to lockdown rules, which may approach the, make it easier to safely meet up with friends. Please help our leaders as they think through what it may look like for our children's and youth groups to be able to start meeting again safely. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that there are fewer and fewer cases of coronavirus in our country. Thank you that this has meant we have been able to ease some of the lockdown restrictions. We pray for those who are struggling at this time, particularly those who have spent long periods of time away from friends and family, and those who are facing job loss and uncertainty. Please continue to be with them. May they know your love and care at this time and help us as a church family to find ways to support to support and care for them. Amen. Father, we thank you for how much you love us all, no matter the colour of our skin. And we thank you that you made us all in your image. Thank you that the Black Lives Matter movement has exposed racism for what it really is. We pray for the families and friends of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and many, many others. We pray that you'll be with them through these difficult times. We pray that you would help all those involved in the protests, police and protesters. We pray that you would keep the protests peaceful and that everyone stays safe. We pray that in these times of change, you help us to live out your word, seek to make a difference and stand up for what is right. Amen. Well, amen indeed. Thank you, Rock Solid, for leading us through our prayers. Before we close our time together, well, Church Family News, you hopefully got the email or you've seen it on the church website. Uh, Please be on the lookout for a blog post coming out on Tuesday. During last week, Dick uh, had a Zoom conversation with Ben Solanke and Bramwell Cabara about how Black Lives Matter at St John's. It was a really convicting time, so do make the most of that video coming out this week on the church website. We'll also be gathering for our uh, evening uh, on Wednesday for church prayer meeting. Uh, Please come along to that. Details for the Zoom will be on the church website again or on Church Family News email. It's such an encouraging time to see one another as we pray for the needs of the world, for life within our church family and some other specific ministry areas. So do please join us for that. And with prayer in mind, let us close our time together by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for joining us this morning for our gathering. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Thanks for stopping by. 
Goodbye. Oh, I just thought Rock's Red Takeover today was class.